you'd be put in check. Tony, the safest hands are still our own. I'm doing what has to be done to stop something worse. How long are you going to play both sides? Do you really want to punch your way out of this? You chose the wrong side. Keep telling yourself that. YouTubers, Hankster here, and uh, welcome to another uh, movie review. And today's movie review is none other than uh, Captain America: Civil War, starring Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., um, <laughs> uh, Scarlett Johansson, uh, Don Cheetah, uh, William Hurt, and numerous other uh, uh, actors we've seen in other Marvel productions, and a couple of new one, new uh, actors that are making their debut in this movie. Well, in a way. <laughs> um, First off here, um, <laughs> this, of course, uh, movie takes place uh, sometime after the events of last year's uh, Avengers movie, Age of Ultron. Um, and with this and the events from the first movie and, of course, the second Captain America movie. And, um, and, uh, and of course, at the beginning of this movie where the Avengers are trying to stop Crossbones uh, from a terrorist attack and winding up. He winds up blowing up a bill several floors in a building uh, while trying to kill himself. Um, the uh, United Nations and their uh, <laughs> infinite wisdom, <laughs> yeah, right, um, decide to uh, make an accords to take him over command of the Avengers, no longer making it a private organization, but something to be controlled by the United Nations. Now, oddly enough, the uh, there are members of the Avengers that say, well, this is a good idea. And this includes, of course, Tony Stark, who we find out is going through some uh, guilt issues involving, he, of course, runs into a, a mother of a victim of, uh, of um, one of the battles they were in, um, who, of course, blames the Avengers for what happened. No, she doesn't blame the actual villains. You know, <laughs> <laughs> perfect gratitude, you know, self-interest, um, you know, you, you know, next time, you know, I, I was part of the Avengers, I said, you know, lady, next time, uh, when a major, uh, villain wants to take over, I'll let him take over the world, and I'll, tell, I'll have, have him come over to your house, make you a slave first, <laughs> bitch, um, <laughs> but, uh, of course, uh, the, the other half of the Avengers that are against this includes, of course, Captain America, who feels that um, they're losing, they're going to be, you know, sit off on maybe wild goose chases while they have to sit on their th hands w when the actual um, attacks happen and, and all that. And, you know, we basically know in the real world that how efficient the United Nations are. <laughs> um, but that's more of a thing for the Weirdo Network to jump into. Um, now, of course, uh, the, during these accords, there's a terrorist attack, which, of course, uh, results in the death of the king of Wakanda, the home of the, of, um, the metal that was behind the, cre uh, the creation of Captain America's shield, Vibranium. And... Uh, and that result kill it kills that the king of that country and it sets off sets his son the prince of the country that country to uh take to get revenge in the form of the black panther um they, of course it was found they were found that it was uh the winter soldier aka bucky barnes um Oh, the old World War II friend of Captain America that was apparently behind this attack. There's a photographic evidence that uh, shows that this might be the case. Well, when Captain America hears about this, he, of course, decides to go on his own to try to get to Bucky before the authorities do. And, of course, gets uh, the Falcon to help him on in this mission, even though it is much to the chagrin of Tony Stark. Uh, let him go. Let him go. Um, of course, uh, 
in the initial chase, there's not, that just involves uh, Bucky and Captain America and the Falcon, but of course also uh, Black Panther jumps in, jumps into the scene. Of course, um, the authorities do catch up with everybody and puts everybody in jail, um, resulting in Captain America and the Falcon being declared criminals for um, disobeying orders. Um, of course, in all this, uh, Captain America, of course, uh, befriends um, somebody connected to his past. He, he meets up with the niece of his uh, ex, his former love interest of World War II. Of course, that's Peggy Carter. Of course, uh, best known for her, uh, best known for the, uh, the television series uh, Agent Carter, Marvel's Agent Carter, which, of course, sadly is uh, not going to go for a third season. And uh, sadly, also the character finally uh, uh, passes away, and, 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 and of course we see a big funeral scene for her in this movie. Um, so uh, probably we're not going to see any more of uh, of uh, Agent Carter. Uh, obviously, they did announce that they, the series was canceled, and and uh, unless Marvel decides to make a origin movie about. Um, of uh, Shield probably won't be seen but you know anywhere of her at anywhere so but and uh, she of course uh, uh, decides to help Captain America out in a lot of situations um, and even uh, maybe it becomes a new love interest I don't know we'll just have to find out in the future <laughs> um, now of course with Captain America and th and uh Iron Man, they, of course, uh, split the team into two groups. Uh, Captain America, of course, uh, enlists the help of the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, and, of course, also uh, Hawkeye, uh, Scarlet Witch. Um, and, oddly enough, even Ant-Man. Ant-Man gets enlisted for the whole thing. Of course, uh, I still have yet to watch the Ant-Man movie. I got a copy. I just haven't gone around to watching it. I had to do it. And, of course, obviously, when I see that, of course, I'll really do a, a review on that, being that I did just did a re doing a review for this movie. And I got to do it. In back I got to do at least the background on him. <laughs> um, well, Iron Man, of course, enlists the help of uh, uh, War Machine, uh, B Black Widow, uh, the vision, and uh, and uh, of course none other than your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, who of course in this movie is uh, um, in the form of a 16-year-old boy with a milfy aunt, uh, played by Marissa Tomei. Um, uh, oddly enough, and uh, got, I got a smooth side note here: uh, Spider-Man in this movie. You look at he, he's when he talks as Spider Man, he sounds like a Ninja Turtle. He sounds like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. You know, he, he do voiceovers for that for the end of the series of the movies or whatever. And but the costume is pretty cool. It kind of harkens back. Uh, people my generation and older might remember a, a TV series on PBS called The Electric Company. And I guess they had tie-ins with Marvel because uh, Spider-Man was on that show. And the Spider-Man outfit in that show looks almost like the one they're using for Spider-Man in this movie. And, of course, this is opening up for uh, the Marvel-Disney version of the Spider-Man movies, which will be coming out in the near future as well. Um, so... Uh, that's pretty cool. So it, it, it's pretty, you know, obviously, it's a kid version of, you know, it's a younger version of Spider-Man. Uh, I kind of like how he, you know, he, he's not like some little wimpy kid. He's, you know, <laughs> kind of, you know, kind of a little goofy at, at times when he's interacting with Iron Man and everything. But, you know, past that, he kind of holds his own in this fight. I mean, she, she can take on both Falcon and Winter Soldier at the same time. Good grief. Um, now, uh, of course, there's other things here, you know, he, uh, Scarlet Witch, of course, as I said, is back, and she, of course, has been sort of protected by the Avengers, or looked over, because she's still kind of considered a young person. Uh, I don't really know how they 
Yeah, I was, she's supposed to be an uh, underage teenager or at least over 18. I'm not sure. Um, Tony Schwerker tries his best to kind of protect her from all this, but she winds up uh, uh, joining up with Captain America's team and all. Um, of course, we all find out that uh, uh, the Winter Soldier is not behind, wasn't behind the terrorist attack, but it was all, it was all uh, started by a guy named Zemo, uh, harkening back to uh, the character Baron Zemo from the comic books, um, who wants to get revenge on the Avengers. And the, well, the, the movie, of course, he wants to get Avengers for what they what happened to his country of uh, Sokovia uh, back in you know Age Voltron um, and all. Um, of course, I also I forget to mention here. Uh, uh, I did mention William Hurt at the beginning of this video. Um, William Hurt, uh, if you remember, of course, played General Thunderbolt Ross in the second Hulk movie. And, of course, he's brought back to reprise his role for this movie. He, of course, this time around, he's not General Thunder, Thunderbolt Ross. He's, um, <laughs> he's actually Secretary of Defense uh, Ross. Um, and also, a few people out there that might be... There's no references to the Red Hulk. He's not... He doesn't turn into the Red Hulk. He does. There's no sign that he turns into the Red Hulk. At any, you know, point of this movie, you know, there's no ending, you know, ending credit scene where he, you know, kind of turns into the Red Hulk. There's no sign that it's, you know, there's no sign that they're, they're going to do this. Uh, but uh, this is the only connection to the Hulk that, you, you know, outside of a couple of mentions in some banner, um, you know, um, Tony Stark and Black Widow are talking. So, what are we? You know, what do you think he'd be? You know, able to join us? And he said, oh, "I don't think you'd be able. You would want to join us." You know, and, you know, and this, you know, Team Cap, uh, Team Iron Man. So, you know, because you, 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 you uh, trying to control the Avengers is one thing. Trying to control the Hulk is another. <laughs> and of course, we won't be seeing the Hulk until uh, the third Thor movie. Uh, Ragnarok, which apparently is, uh, he's going to have a bigger role in this movie than originally thought. He's not just going to have a you know small appearance role. He's actually going to be it looks like it's going to be you know he to him teaming up with Thor in this adventure. So, but uh, we'll just have to find out in, in the month, the, the weeks and months to come until the movie that movie comes out next year. Um, now back to <laughs> the actual movie in, in question. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Zemo is, of course, trying to get revenge on the events of what happened in Sokovia. Um, Black Panther is still trying to hunt down, uh, of course, the Winter Soldier. Of course, he, he of course, joins Team uh, Iron Man in this battle as well. Of course, he, along with everybody else, finds out the truth. And... Uh, Things come to a head in Siberia, where apparently uh, where the uh, Winter Soldier project was uh, taking place, um, and they all think that uh, Zemo is on his way to try to resurrect uh, any of the other experiments of uh, that project to take them on, but uh, it's it's a little more deeper than that. I'm not going to give you give too much away about what he wants to do. If you haven't seen this movie, it's still out there, obviously. Um, but uh, I, I know the hype for that's calming down. A lot of people have seen this. I just want to, you know, don't want to give too much spoilers away uh, for that. Uh, but uh, it's deeper than that. And of course, uh, even goes to the core of uh, what was happening and then the the court started to tear Avengers apart. And just basically, this truth go deeper into uh, maybe even try and tear it apart even deeper, in the sense of maybe killing some people. But thankfully, uh, that didn't happen. And um, Captain America, of course, uh, uh, of course, things kind of split off. At the, at, the, at the end of the movie, of course, uh, 
some people go their separate ways and all that. Even there is still a Avengers group and all that and all. Uh, but uh, there probably is going to be a, obviously a possible reteaming up by the time uh, the next Avengers movie comes out. The the Infinity Wars and everything. Um, interesting too. Now of course, uh, uh, one interesting note I want to talk about here as well. I mean, uh, as I said, you know, with. Uh, and all this is a great movie. Uh, special effects, way of being the action scenes, uh, keeps you on your seat. What's actually you try to figure out what actually is going on here, plot-wise, um, in the sense of uh, who the real villain is, what is his uh, true agenda, and everything, and all. Um, but I want to make note to another a particular scene. If anybody remember from last year's uh, Terminator uh, Genesis movie. Um, they kind of redid the same technology again for this movie. Uh, you know, obviously with uh, in Terminator Genesis, you know, you had Arnold looking like he does to, you know, these days, fight, taking on his younger self. You know, when the uh, when the good Terminator takes on his evil counterpart from 1984, you know, he's basically fighting a younger version. Of, Arnold's fighting a younger version of himself. And that technology is used again in the sense of. Uh, making an older actor look young again, and that's in the sense of uh, Robert Downey Jr., and there's a particular scene at the beginning of the movie where um, Robert, I mean, uh, Tony Stark's flashing back to when he was younger in college, um, and he's, you know, meeting up his par- with his parents before, just before their death, and, um, and uh, they actually made I don't know if it's, you know, Robert Downey Jr. actually playing the part or or another so standing actor or whatever. But, um, they actually made him look younger. They're looking back when, you know, when that's supposed to be 1991 or something like that. Um, so, uh, just harking back to that. That, that was a you know, great job, obviously, because obviously they couldn't go back to 1991 and, and ask Robert Downey Jr. to, you know, play a young Tony Stark, you know, but, uh, the things they can do is just use old, you know, materials from old footage and, and, uh, you know, enhance them enough to kind of work in with, uh, and that was, that was, that was so that was one of the cool elements of the movie, um, in that, too. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of, you know, with, uh, uh, Spider-Man in it, and, I, you know, even Ant-Man was pretty cool in it. Um, I'm greatly impressed with, uh, Black Panther. Uh, kind of makes me eager to go see, uh, the Black Panther movie when that comes out in the near future. Um, um. I know there's a thing floating around the uh, YouTube. There's supposed to be a cut, uh, end credit scene involving um, uh, the Hulk and Thor's warrior friends and everything. Apparently, when I went to see this movie, I did not see this in the end credits. They had two different. They had like a mid credit and an end credit segment. Um, same as neither of them featured the Hulk or Thor or anything any connection to the upcoming Ragnarok movie so uh, I was kind of expecting that and uh, even though the two uh, credit scene credit scenes were pretty cool um, we just had to wait till uh, uh, next year to see the Hulk and, and Thor back together in the theaters but uh as I said, this is a really good movie to go see. Um, it's funny that uh, this is—I had to do it, probably do a separate video about these. Uh, it's like uh, when you get these, you know, somebody versus somebody movies. I guess that's a running theme in a lot of movies. You got Batman versus Superman. You got Civil War for Marvel. Um, just you know, they got the Neighbors 2, and even uh, the Angry Birds movie features posters with the people with the you know the two groups facing each other in almost the same uh, pose and the same look. 
as you know, like Batman versus Superman and in, in uh, Civil War posters are doing. Um, they, I guess they're trying and to draw and maybe draw a, you know not just laughs but also the fans of the those two movies to go see these other movies, you know, um, and all. But uh, it's that is just a funny concept that uh, they're kind of going further with this uh, this versus that. Uh, concept for other movies uh, to help in their promotion. Um, obviously, uh, my next uh, movie review will be back to another Marvel movie, and of course that's the uh, upcoming uh, movie uh, X-Men Apocalypse, and probably after that, of course, the uh, uh, new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie In the Shadows, uh, featuring uh, Arrow, I, I mean... Uh, Casey Jones, <laughs> uh, you know, things I could do with that gag, <laughs> but I uh, hope you enjoyed this review, Ch you know, check it out, still in theaters, uh, you know, get some time before checking out, uh, as I said, X-Men and all, um, do so, and uh, stay tuned here for more reviews and uh, whatnot here on the Multiverse. See ya.